Michelle from Stitch and Hustle. I am so excited because today we're gonna to talk about chunky merino. Some people call it woolen tops, some people call it roving, some people call it chunky merino. Basically what it is, is it's not yet processed. So it really is roving. Um, and when you get it, a lot of times you're gonna get it in this huge skein or this huge ball and I know you want to dive right into it and arm knit your blanket or hand knit that scarf, but there is something you need to do first, and that is hand felting. What? Yeah, for real. So I want to show you today how to hand felt your chunky merino so that it can be ready for any project that you want to make. Okay? The first thing that I want to tell you is no jewelry. Yeah, see, rings off. It will snag, it will catch, no bueno. Okay, so when you get your chunky merino wool or woolen tops, you're gonna wanna just take it out of the bag and just set it aside. It's gonna be big and fluffy and don't worry about that because that's the point. So just put it into a pile. Felting is the process of friction and moisture to help secure the wool. That's really all felting is. And so hand felting is using your natural skin moisture, so make sure you're hydrated, drink lots of water, and then you're gonna add some friction and I'm gonna show you how, and you're gonna hand felt to secure the wool. So basically you're gonna take this huge pile of awesome and turn it into a workable ball that is still super fluffy for your projects, but as you can see, it's a little bit more manageable. It will also stay secure for your projects, okay? So, the first thing you wanna do after you've made sure that you're not wearing any jewelry is pile up your chunky merino wool and you're just going to run it from one side to the other. And you're gonna do this two or three times, however many you need, depending on how fluffy the merino wool is. So. Basically, you take it in one hand, and I want to pause here and tell you, don't pull. It's roving. You can pull it apart. You just want to be gentle in this process and just add a little bit of friction. So you're going to take it in one hand around the roving, and with the other hand, you're just going to start gently pulling it through. So that's it. And you're just going to make it from one pile to another. Now, a couple of things is that if little dusties go flying, that's okay. Um, this is why you can't really wear jewelry because it will snag and it will be snagalicious. If you get to a portion where like there's a little bit of, like this has like a little bit, um, I don't know if you can see it, a little bit like hanging off, just leave it. Don't start picking at it because once you start picking and pulling, that's when you're making a mess. So of the wool and it will come apart. So you just want to do this process. And see, look, see, I just got a little bit there. Just keep going. It's not gonna bother you. It's gonna work in as you create that hand felting friction and just keep going. You don't need to twist and you don't need to tug. So insert, fast forward, and whoopsie, all done in a minute. And voila, that was a lot. Okay, so this is a three pound bag of super bulky merino because I'm gonna be using it to make a pet bed for my friend's dog and we're gonna show you that in a future video. So this is a lot. Typically you would buy them by one pound balls, sometimes two and they come in these big skeins or big balls, but you do want to go back and forth usually three to four times, but you'll know when you feel confident that the big stitch merino is ready to be worked up into your favorite new project. You want it to look something like this. This is a one pound ball that's already been hand felted a couple of times. And so eventually you can see the difference here. This is the hand felted and this is the new just once. So you can see the difference. It's still fluffy, it's still amazing. It just needs to be felted by hand a couple of more times. And that's it. So I'm gonna go back and forth a few times and then I'll be ready to make my pet bed. If you have any comments or have a tip on how to work with Big Stitch Merino, comment below and let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to Stitch and Hustle so you never miss a tip or a stitch. And I'll see you next time. Keep your stitches on.